This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, today I want to talk about how thankful I am to have a very special friend in my life. I am of course talking about none other than Cool Cat. Oh yes, my take on Cool Cat Saves the Kids, which also happens to be the very first video voted upon by my executive producers at Patreon.com, very quickly became my most popular review, beating Tentacolino and Alpha and Omega. It tells the story of a shrill, annoying children's mascot spazzing his way through life, and kinda sorta offering some vague lessons about how to deal with bullies, what to do if you find a gun just randomly lying around in your backyard, it happens, and how to jerk off. Some of you may remember that a few years ago, Cool Cat creator Derek Savage organized a Kickstarter campaign in order to shoot seven new scenes for Cool Cat Saves the Kids. Using the working title, Cool Cat Loves You, this new cut of the film would be distributed on Netflix, Hulu, and even the big screen. Because who wouldn't want to see this in movie theaters? Step aside, Joker. <laughs> the Kickstarter was a success, thanks in part to yours truly, because we need Derek Savage to go on to produce Cool Cat vs. the Wicked Witch. But instead of getting Cool Cat Loves You, the project was renamed as Cool Cat Kids Superhero, because Savage thought only superhero movies make money these days. Yeah, because if there's anything keeping Cool Cat Saves the Kids from reaching its full potential, it's the title. After Savage blows up the world with his production logo, you open on one of the few points of praise I have for this movie. This aerial shot slowly zooming in on Cool Cat hanging out in his front yard is so much more visually interesting than just watching him dance on a green screen for the opening titles. It almost looks like a real movie. Unfortunately, this one point of praise is kind of sullied since the music still has the chimes where Cool Cat's bringing the titles into view. In his Kickstarter video, Derek Savage says that he wanted to get some celebrities to make an appearance. I wish I grabbed a screenshot of the bit where he wrote down that he wanted to get someone like Lady Gaga, Halle Berry, or Justin Bieber, but joining us instead is martial arts expert Cynthia Rothrock. She's known for playing kick-ass leading ladies in movies like Lady Dragon, Undefeatable, and Honor and Glory. Who does she play in this movie? Mama Cat. Oh yeah. He hired a martial artist to do voice work for a character who wasn't given any additional material. Ingersoll the lol is one thing, but how do you mess that up? What's even funnier is that I totally called this. I was encouraging people to donate to the Kickstarter, and when I mentioned that Savage was trying to get more marquee value into this movie, I said, Which one of these celebrities will play Mama Cat? Only one way to find out. I meant that as a joke, Daddy Derek. I didn't think you were going to take that as a suggestion. You might be asking yourself why Savage would hire someone new to play Mama Cat when the original actress and all of her southern charm played the part just fine. According to former Cool Cat actor Jason Johnson, Savage had asked out Mama Cat's actress, April Ann Reese, a number of times, and she turned him down. After the final day of shooting, she offered Johnson the use of her shower, since she lived right across the street from the house where most of the movie takes place. And what happened next? I'm in the shower getting out, all of a sudden he busts open the door to this woman's house, he comes busting in there with his black bro tank top thing, <laughs> looking for her and looking for me, thinking that something is going on. 
And this coming from the same guy who made a self-defense movie for women. Holy shit. Anyway, back to the movie. Oh my god, I just said back to the movie and the movie hasn't even started yet. Settle in, people. We're in for a long one. We zoom in on Cool Cat painting in his front yard, making me think he's going to start singing Rainbow Connection. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And then we cut to the same spot several hours later, given the change in lighting. Paint a picture, paint a picture. Oh, how I love to paint a picture. Yay! Uh, nothing beats that classic Derek Savage dialogue. This is what's going to make the movie into a true cinematic experience. And yeah, I know you don't want to risk messing up the suit by having paint splatter onto it. These things can be expensive. But couldn't they do something to make it look like he's actually painting this picture here? Well, hi, Cool Cat. What are you doing? Hey, Daddy Derek. I'm just painting a picture. Now I'm going to practice my new rap song, Cool Cat Rap Master. In the immortal words of The Strong Bad, let's witness the whiteness. As they step inside to work on Cool Cat's new rap song, we can see this little alcove commemorating the passing of a loved one. Not one of Savage's loved ones, this house actually belongs to a friend of his. I'm only bringing this up because this person who clearly had an affinity for the moving picture is being used as a background element in this movie. Sir or madam, I am deeply sorry that Derek Savage is dishonoring your memory like this. Hey, son, what you going to stand up there behind your microphone? Again with calling him son. I have no idea what we're looking at here. Is he Cool Cat's stepfather? His biological father? Is he just some guy that his mom knows and likes to go by the name of Daddy Derek to the kids in his neighborhood? And lest we forget, Cool Cat was originally Savage's childhood imaginary friend. Seeing as how there aren't any other giant anthropomorphic animals in this world, I'm tempted to think that all of this is just happening in his head. Is this movie nothing but a window into this man's deranged mind? Then again, if this is just his imagination, that might explain him being married to Cynthia Rothrock in a cat costume. So they have a little rap session which redefines the word cringe with every passing second. Hip hip hip, the hop hop hop, I got a story to tell you about the coolest cat. His name is Cool Cat and the kids love him so, so you better watch out cause he's an anti-bullying hero. He's the rap master and everyone knows it's true, so you better not forget so you're cool too. But on the plus side, Savage was wise enough to remove the label from this water bottle here. I took the label off this. Because I don't want any problems. Ignorant of the law is not an excuse. Did you just throw a plastic bottle in the trash? Oh wow, I guess I did. That's a no-no. We should always recycle. And I love to recycle our cans and bottles. And it's good for the earth. And that's cool. You know, you're right, Cool Cat. And I tell you what, it's great to recycle. And I'm going to start right now. Okay, time for a new counter gag. Let's see how many shoehorned messages we can get in there. I rap this beat to make you better, cause in this crazy world we all need to come together. So you be cool and- We should always recycle, and I love to recycle our cans and bottles, and it's good for the earth. Here you go, son. Add this to your collection. Thanks. You know it really adds up. I made a lot of money recycling these cans and bottles, and I want to use the money for this pet drive, so people will adopt homeless animals! Wow, that is such a great cause! And Cool Cat wants to adopt... a shelter animal? Oh my god, that is so confusing! Maybe that's how Daddy Derek got Mama Cat? And that's why you want to spay or neuter your pets, ladies and gentlemen! Well, I'm gonna go add this to my collection! Wait, how do you have a collection if you're constantly recycling and making a lot of money off of it? And for that matter, why is Cool Cat educating his daddy about recycling? Should it be the other way around? Where did Cool Cat learn about recycling? His mom? Kinda hard to believe that since, you know, they're friggin' cats. I wouldn't think cats would be all that ecologically minded. Good golly! Here comes Leatherface to finish me off! Yay! Oh my god, Leatherface wearing the freshly removed face of Cool Cat. I gotta make that into a Halloween costume. No, it's not someone wielding a chainsaw. I know you're all as disappointed as I am. It's Daddy Derek and an unnamed biker friend who takes Cool Cat for a ride around the block. This poor confused biker 
Savage didn't even give him any lines. He's just here because Savage wanted to borrow his trike, and he's tagging along to make sure Savage doesn't sell it for booze money or something. Hey, Daddy Derek, can we please take a ride? We sure can, Cool Cat. Oh my god, this editing is atrocious. Again, this was supposed to be the more cinematic version of the movie. This is what Daddy Derek wants to sell to theaters and streaming platforms. So they go off on their little ride, without wearing any helmets. I guess helmets just aren't cool. Thank you, children's safety mascot. Seven minutes later, we continue with the original cut of Cool Cat Saves the Kids. And what did that extra material provide? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Oh, and take a look at this. There's a Christmas tree in the living room. Earlier, they passed a house with Halloween cobwebs in its bushes. And the planters in front of Cool Cat's house have star-spangled pinwheels. Hey, Cool Cat, I just got a text, but I don't know who it is. Well, it's not good to open a text from a stranger, but I'm here, so see what it says. Okay, so Daddy Derek changed this dialogue into something a little smarter, in that you shouldn't answer texts from strangers. Only a little smarter, since what the hell does Cool Cat being there actually do? So it would appear as though he's listening to some of the criticism that's been aimed at this movie. Unfortunately, we've still got the Hollywood parade, the pointless subplot with the writing contest, and a bunch of other garbage. But I suppose a little editorial polish is better than nothing. It could be good news! And I love to get good news! Yeah, me too! What if it's a secret contest? And I just want a whole bunch of money! Then we can take a nice trip together! No, never mind. He kept this dialogue. It's still stupid. Listen to us, someone just texted me! You're ugly and your hair looks like rat hair. Ha ha ha! It worked! Maria looks sad. I love being a boy! It's really a shame that Cool Cat got another song in this cut of the movie. Why don't we have Butch singing his own villain song? Maria, look over there! It's Bush the Bully! And he's running away! And he's laughing! I bet he was the one picking on us. What's the matter with him? He's always bullying somebody, and he has no friends! Funny, I thought you loved all kids, Cool Cat. And I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids! Let's take a look at this part I didn't cover in my original review. Oh no! Butch the Bully tagged our sign! Ouch! That dumb wind blew paint in my face! Ugh. Wait, hold on. That's not very smart. Some wind blew paint into his face. That's what he gets. My daddy calls that payback. So does my daddy. In fact, my daddy says, what goes around comes around. I can't tell if this should go in the shoehorned message counter. True, karma is something to be considered but it seems kind of counterintuitive to the whole anti-bully thing. I mean, here we have a bully, and it sucks that he's making things bad for others, so it's okay if bad things happen to him? Way to take the moral high road, Cool Cat. Okay, new counter for giving the wrong message. And I'm counting him running around without a helmet, too. Oh no, look! It's Bush the Bully! It looks like he's up to no good! That's a perfect spot to put the beam on. And that B stands for bad boys. He's about to graffiti our neighbor's wall. And it's not cool to paint on someone's wall. I've got to stop him. Hey, what was that? Was he shot by an imaginary arrow? I've got to stop him. So he gives his little spiel about how these kids don't need to tag other people's stuff because he really loves them. And listen very closely past the dialogue. The truth is, there's a lot of people that love you and care for you. Do you hear that whispering? Let me play it for you again, because I missed it the first time, too. The truth is, there's a lot of people that love you and care for you. I mean, what the hell is even happening right now? Did the cameraman's son join him for the shoot, and Daddy Derek didn't tell him to shut up during the take? Speaking of things I didn't notice before, we've got this guy walking out of his house and walking back in upon seeing this movie being shot, and I've got a bit of flag for it since everyone else noticed it, but not me. In this cut, however, Savage must have hired someone who knew a thing or two about After Effects and digitally erased this guy from the movie. Gotta give credit where credit is due. This was a good fix. My parents have a saying, with a friend's like that, you better not have any enemies. So why do you want to paint the wall? You have the kid's power. 
You can be anything you want to be. You just got to work hard and make it happen. And that's a saying you can take to the streets. Because Cool Cat is so street, yo. For shizzle. So now that that's over and done with, things can get back to being... Exquisite! Have a seat. Aw, oh, come on! You had to cut that weird jerking off gesture. Boo! Although, I guess it is kind of gratifying to see him listening to one of my criticisms. And the transition was pretty seamless. I honestly don't know how to feel about this. After some creepy schmoozing between Daddy Derek and his replacement wife, we see that Cool Cat has changed t-shirts between takes. Must get sweaty from all of this spasming, er, I mean dancing. We get another missed opportunity to fine-tune this cyberbullying scene as Cool Cat checks his email. What? You, you have a, a... A fat nose? And you smell like a dirty dog? No, it says you look like a dirty dog. Like before with the dialogue about getting texts from strangers, this could have been fixed just by having the actor re-record his lines. He writes back to the cyberbully when a more appropriate response would be to simply not feed the trolls. Then we see him dreaming later that night. Again, points must be awarded as we see some new footage that actually has his eyes shut so it looks like he's sleeping instead of just tripping balls. Although to be fair, wouldn't you sleep with your eyes open if Daddy Derek was your father? Good point. And points must be taken away for not cutting the stupid going into Dreamland bit. Really, movie? While in Dreamland, he starts mulling over how he can deal with bullies. <laughs> I know I get mad when someone bullies me, but perhaps I just punch them. But wait, you'll get in trouble if you hit someone, and that's not cool. Yeah, there is nothing cool about accepting whatever meager punishment you get for standing up for yourself. Again, I was bullied myself a couple of times when I was a kid, and when diplomacy failed, unfortunately, things had to escalate. I got detention here and there, but what matters is that I never got any repeat bullies. You'll get in trouble if you hit someone, and that's not cool! Uh, I'm gonna learn to stand up for myself! Yes! That's a great way to stop bullying! Stand up for yourselves! Just, you know... Don't resort to violence or anything. But enough about that. We've got a Hollywood parade to go visit. Because Lord knows we needed to hang on to this pointless subplot. Here, I help you get in the car here. Was it locked? Yes, it was, Daddy Derek. Well, that's for safety purposes. Yeah, lock the door with the windows rolled down. For safety purposes. Hi, everybody. It's me, Cool Cat. And I've got a fantastic story to tell you. It's about a parade. But not just any parade, the Hollywood Parade! But first, we have to go back to my funhouse! So come on kids, let's all go to Cool Cat's Funhouse! Oh hooray, I can't wait. Just like your reaffirming bedroom, is your clubhouse gonna be your mom's dining room covered with pictures of you? Could be worse. How? It could be Daddy Derek's room covered in pictures of Mama Cat. Oh my lord. They get home and tell Mama Cat about the parade, and I guess the After Effects guy that Savage got to polish this scene must have gone home, because he could have easily fixed Mama Cat's cropped fingers that betrayed this split-screen effect. Hello? Hey, Maria! It's me, Cool Cat! You will not believe what happened a day in Hollywood! Did you lose your cell phone? Why are you calling her on your landline? It's happened in a couple of days, but... Oh, no! I, I just realized something. I've got a lot to do before then. What should I do? I don't know the answer to that question, but I asked your daddy. He might know what to do. That's great advice. I'm going to ask him about that. Well, you know what? Can I call you tomorrow? Sure, cool cat. See you tomorrow. Bye. I better find something to do or else I'm going to get bored. What? Didn't you just say you had a whole bunch of stuff to do that might impede on your going to the Hollywood parade? Why aren't you scrambling to get any of that done? And this is another additional scene. In the original cut, he just said that it was Betty Bye time. 
Ah, it's Betty by time. That was kind of dumb, since he's going to bed while it's still the middle of the afternoon, but it wasn't as stupid as, Oh no! I've got a lot to do! i better find something to do to keep from getting bored! What the hell, movie? Ooh. Lollipop, lollipop, oh how I love a lollipop! Lollipop, lollipop, tastes so yummy! And now he's gonna eat some nasty-ass unwrapped lollipop that he found lying next to someone's ashes. Yeah, nothing unsanitary about this. Come to think of it, who just leaves an unwrapped lollipop lying around? Whoever left it for Cool Cat to find... I can't help but feel like he needs to be in jail. Lollipop, lollipop, oh how I love a lollipop! Lollipop, lollipop, tastes so yummy! But wait, I don't want candy. That's why I just sang a little song about how yummy it tastes. Ooh, that's one of my daddy's video cameras. I'm gonna eat this instead. And I'm pretty sure that this camera belongs to the unnamed cinephile being commemorated here. And we can add grave robbing to Cool Cat's rap sheet. So Cool Cat starts filming a reality show, and suffice it to say, it's pretty terrifying. Hey everybody, it's me, Cool Cat, and this is my new reality show, Cool Cat's Funhouse. People will die, starting tonight. I'm a man of my word. Exquisite! He takes the camera into the backyard where we see... Yeah, great. We have a movie about anti-bullying, so let's show a few seconds of the director showing what he'll do to anyone who talks bad about it. Subtle! And the Cool Cat theme song is part of his workout playlist? Then again, maybe thinking about Cool Cat would make you want to hit something with a couple of sticks, so... Ooh! Now watch this! He's got the commas! This is awesome! Now he's using his deadly chipmunk style! Oh, hey Cool Cat! What are you doing? Hey Daddy Dirt! I'm just making a reality show! Well, that sounds like a lot of fun right there. Just please be careful with the camera. I will, and it's working really good. I just shot my first scene, and you're in it. Really? Well, I guess that's okay. Yeah, why bother teaching your son that you should get someone's consent before getting them on a video? Just film whoever you want. I guess that's okay. The next day. Hey, Daddy Derek. Wow, what a beautiful day. But where's Mama Cat? Hey, Cool Cat, and you just missed her. Mama Cat went to the beauty parlor with Vivica A. Fox. I think they're having their hair done or something like that. But why did Mama Cat and Vivica go to the beauty parlor? They're already so beautiful! Considering the drama that went on behind him and the cats after shooting was completed, you'd think Daddy Derek would want to avoid any dialogue that might suggest Cool Cat thinks his mother is sexually attractive. And like the jerking off thing from before, this could be corrected with the simple cut. But where's Mama Cat? Hey, Cool Cat, and you just missed her. Mama Cat went to the beauty parlor with Vivica A. Fox. I think they're having their hair done or something like that. Are you ready for breakfast? No thanks, not yet. Easy peasy. Something else I didn't mention the last time I reviewed this movie. Daddy Derek and Cool Cat write a new song for the parade, and he's playing a guitar that he's very keen on pointing out was autographed by Van Halen. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about, but if I had an accordion that was autographed by Weird Al, I wouldn't want to play it. Just prop it up for the world to see so I can say, Oh yeah, I've got an accordion autographed by Weird Al, baby. Maybe next to a tube of bologna or something. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. Oh, by the way, check this out. I've got my own copy of Amazing Fantasy number 15, featuring the very first appearance of Spider-Man, and I had it autographed by Stan the Man Lee himself. Now let's get back to the review. I get ready for my next performance. It's a dance number. And it's called Boogie Woogie Time. All right, let's go have fun then, buddy. I 
Dino, I'll show you some new footage that shows how the living room and dining room are now completely different from how they were in these earlier scenes. Yay! Wow, it's pretty dark in here. I hope I can find the switch. Oh, here it is. Wow, now we're in the green screen room. I should point out that in the last movie, we just cut from the Cool Cat song to the green screen room. Again, what does this additional footage add to this cut of the movie? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! But how do I turn it on? Which button is it? Well, maybe it's this one. Or maybe it's this one. No, maybe it's this one. It's none of those buttons because that's not how green screens work. But hey, it is good to see that Daddy Derek is using royalty-free backgrounds for this music video. There's right, and there's wrong. I bet the kids will boogie to that song. And while everyone else sounds like they're being recorded on location in a house that clearly wasn't designed with sound recording in mind, Mama Cat sounds perfect because she has a recording studio in her own head or something. The big day of the Hollywood parade arrives, and I'm embarrassed for not commenting on this before. Isn't Cool Cat supposed to be a little kid? Why is he driving the Cool Cat Convertible? Father of the year, Daddy Derek is. Speaking of cars, we still have the lineup of famous Hollywood cars, but they cut the Jurassic Park vehicle, Herbie the Love Bug, Kit, the Starsky and Hutch car, the Ferrari from Magnum P.I., and the Smokey and the Bandit car. I think Savage listened to my advice in particular again, and only showcased cars that kids would actually recognize. But then why did he cut the Jurassic Park Jeep? Maybe he learned too late that he's not allowed to show Buffalo Wild Wings without their consent? Ignorant of the law is not an excuse. They also added some shots of Butch the Bully, who still looks to be the same age as he was the last time we saw him, making me wonder what this footage was originally for, since it couldn't be pickup footage from years later, watching the Hollywood Parade in Envy. Okay, now this is getting weird. Okay, weirder. I mean, I pointed out in my review for Cool Cat Saves the Kids that Butch the Bully must be a victim of bullying, and that's why he lashes out as a bully himself, and I theorized in Cool Cat Stops Bullying that Butch picks on Cool Cat in particular because Cool Cat's very existence is offensive to him. Was this footage of Butch stewing in his own hatred for Cool Cat added to the movie just to play up that narrative that I made up? That parade's dumb. Cool Cat's the ugliest person in it. That's alright. He might be on TV talking to that movie star, Erica Strata. la di da da But I'll think of another way to get you. Just wait! Now would be a perfect opportunity for Savage to dub the soundtrack with new cheers that wouldn't be so obviously looped, but nah, this is fine. Leave it as it is. And what's with the song? They took Cool Cat Loves to Boogie Woogie Woo and slowed it down a bit, put it into a minor key. Why did they make it sound like a dirge? Wow! Daddy Derek, the Hollywood Parade was cool! Ah, I'm getting really tired. I could use a nap. You could use a nap? It's nighttime! You should be going to bed right now! Or do your parents not enforce any kind of rules on you when they bend to your every whim like the rich kid you are? The next morning, Cool Cat meets Mommy and Daddy downstairs. Hi, sweetie. Maria called a few minutes ago, and she'll meet you at Vivica's... Oh my god, are you serious?! Something else I didn't catch from the original cut was Mama Cat's dialogue being edited in such a way so that she stutters the word Vivica's house backwards somehow. Maria called a few minutes ago and she'll meet you at Vivica's house. But here we have an entirely different actress recording on a completely clean slate, giving Daddy Derek the chance to do it again the right way, and he just goes and makes the same mistake twice? Vivica's house. Vivica's. 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 Why? We later find Maria on her way to Vivica Fox's house when she runs into Butch. Sure was nice of the movie to give him fat kid music. Hey, you bully! 
Kulkat's going to be a Hollywood parade and you're not. And we're going to a movie star's house to have fun and you're not. Ha ha, go bully that. Yeah, so why prevent bullying when you can instigate bullying instead? There's right and there's wrong. Instead of jumping straight to Vivica's house like in Saves the Kids, we get an additional shot of Cool Cat and Daddy Derek walking out to their car. Oh wow, it's such a beautiful day! And I love to have fun a beautiful day! Ah, good, you raised money to shoot this new footage just so you can dub it over with old dialogue. Oh wow, it's such a beautiful day! And I love to have fun a beautiful day! Spared no expense. Wow, Vivica, it's such a beautiful day! Oh, it sure is, Eric. And where is Cool Cat? There he is! And here's me making the obligatory reviewer making fun of Eric Estrada joke. There he is! I had the biggest crush on him when I was a kid. Not so much after this, huh? Not really. There he goes! So Cool Cat and Maria are playing in Vivica's sandbox, and Butch shows up. <laughs> hey, who's that kid? I don't know. Probably one of Cool Cat's friends. Oh, no, I don't think so, Vivica. All of Cool Cat's friends are cool. That kid looks like he's up to trouble. Meaning that you're judging how cool this kid is based on nothing but how he looks. Again, this is another problem that could be easily fixed with a simple jump cut. Hey, who's that kid? I don't know. Probably one of Cool Cat's friends. Oh, look at here. It isn't Cool Cat. It's Lil Louie. I go through all the trouble of fixing something as elaborate as digitally removing someone from one scene, but not fixing something as simple as cutting some problematic dialogue. Butch kicks in their sandcastle because a sandcastle killed his parents or something. And in the spirit of fairness, I do need to highlight this little bit of insight from the adults who otherwise did nothing. Remember, always tell your teacher if someone at school bullies you. And don't ever be afraid to go to a trusted adult and tell them. Hopefully the adults you tell will actually intervene in some way, but that is still good advice. Butch comes back seconds later, but Cool Cat isn't having any of it. We're not gonna give you our lunch money! I'm a bully, and I don't like your sand cat! Leave us alone right now! Another thing I'm just now noticing, thanks to the bad editing, it sounds like Cool Cat is stuttering with fear. Leave us alone right now! Yeah, and you better stop right now! I'm gonna tell my mom! So the movie ends as Cool Cat breaks the fourth wall and tells us how much he loves us. I love you, and I've had so much fun playing with you. Let's all be friends, and together we can stop bullying. Yay! No, just kidding. We still got half an hour of garbage left. I know that this used to be a short film just about how to deal with bullies, but if there's going to be so much movie left to go, why include this original ending like it's wrapping things up? After some more additional footage, where Cool Cat walks a laughably older Maria home, he finds one of Daddy Derek's magazines sitting on his front step. And oh my god, this cover is absolutely horrifying. Look behind the headline, this could be your face. Why did they completely remove this child's eyes? If it's a matter of not wanting to pay royalties to whatever child model was used for this image, couldn't they take the eyes from another little girl and put them in their place so it looked like an entirely different person? Or hell, if that's too complicated, have the This Could Be Your Face title inside of a completely white circle slapped over the kid's face. Nobody would think twice about that, but this? What magazine is this? Circus Freak Monthly? Wait, why did Cool Cat come home by himself instead of with Daddy Derek? Did he just drop him off at Vivica Fox's house and hope that she'd keep him? Speaking of Daddy Derek, why does he subscribe to a children's magazine? So we go into the Pointless Kids Writing Contest, much to the discomfort of the actress wearing the mama cat suit. Look at her legs twitching. She is not having a good time in there. Oh god, someone say cat! I need to get out of this suit! I can't breathe! Cool guy goes to the backyard to write his magnum opus about how Trolley the Trot makes another friend, and this tree is looking a lot better than it did the last time we saw it. Great continuity! He then goes upstairs to work on the cover for his Newberry Award winning work. Little yellow here! Little blue here. Ooh, a little green on Charlie the Trout. Draw him some more. Make a sign for Charlie the Trout by the lake. Yeah, this is a masterpiece. Ooh, 
What do you think? And all of that from using the color green. That really is a magic marker. Wait, why did they print out this image, cut off the margins, and then glue it onto another piece of paper? What's the point of that? Nice job not photoshopping out the credit by Derek Savage, too. That's a new topic for the next Cool Cat movie. Cool Cat learns about plagiarism. You cannot steal copyrighted artwork or movie or anything like that. It's illegal and you're stealing right there. Well, guys, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> How can anyone look at this and think that this is the best way to represent a passage of time? You really couldn't just set up the camera outside of the house early in the morning? And here's something that requires even less effort. Taking this footage of Cool Cat brushing his lack of teeth and not flipping the image around. What, was Day Derek afraid that kids would be confused if they saw that this t-shirt was backwards in the mirror? Anyway, he goes downstairs to meet Mommy and Daddy for breakfast. Hey, Cool Cat, I hope you're hungry because we made something tasty. That's right, honey child. It's unfortunate that decades of movies and TV have conditioned us to think that Southern accents just inherently sound kind of dumb, but somehow, that sounds dumber without the Southern accent. That's right, honey child. That was great! Now I'm gonna go outside and play! Cool Cat goes outside to play with his friends, leaving his folks to clean the dishes. <laughs> we call this teamwork, huh? Hello! I love teamwork! Ooh, it's so good. much fun! After Cool Cat's friend Mikey almost gets run over by a passing car... I learned my lesson. I'm always gonna look both ways. I'm glad! They hear a breaking news announcement over the radio. This is a special news report. Kids beware. There have been several robberies. Bad guys are stealing candy from babies. But not so special that it couldn't be redubbed, apparently. Or if that's too much trouble, this radio bit could be completely cut out of the movie. Check it out. I learned my lesson. I'm always gonna look both ways. I'm glad, cause that was scary! Help! Help! Please help me! A boy just took my candy! And my school books! Now I have nothing to read! You see? The effect is the same. You don't have to imply that absolutely nothing is going on, giving this radio announcer nothing to talk about. And it didn't cost you a dime. Help! A bully just stole my candy and he's right there! <laughs> I got candy! You don't! <laughs> oh no! It's Bush the Bully! He's a dirty litter bug! After Cool Cat chases down Butch by crossing the street without looking both ways before doing so, Butch gets arrested by porn actor turned police officer Steve Crest. Okay, that's a weird casting choice. Derek Savage got Burbank Police Chief Scott Lachos to do a little anti-gun PSA. He got a TV actor who's known first and foremost for playing a police officer. Why go with this guy? You're not dressed like in the movies. They should make a kid's movie about you. We'll name it Cool Cat is a Hero. So here we have a scene that you dub over with new dialogue, and syncing that dialogue up with their lips just might be an issue. But you do it anyway? And with the wrong title? We'll name it Cool Cat Saves the Kids. We'll name it Cool Cat is a Hero. What game we gonna play? I know. Who's got a suggestion? Let me talk, asshole. Again, cutting is your friend. And it's incredibly cost effective. You don't need to raise $2,700 to do this. What game we gonna play? I know. Let's play Treasure Hunters. I saw a TV show last week. Where some kids found a whole bunch of cool stuff. The first thing you're going to find is a healthy lunch waiting for you in the kitchen. Mama Cat's waiting for you, so let's get on inside, guys. Didn't he just have breakfast five minutes ago? Finish your breakfast, Tommy. It's time for lunch. <laughs> Here's our lucky stick. It seems like every treasure hunter has one. So, we ought to have one, too. Oh, yeah. Indiana Jones wouldn't go anywhere without his lucky stick. Cool, what's that over there? I see it's an antique. I hear that antiques can be worth a lot of money. Eh, just a rusty old can. What, you don't want to recycle it so it can become treasure? I.e. money? <laughs> of course we reach the critical point where they find a gun that just randomly appears in Cool Cat's backyard. I don't know, should we, should we pick it up and take it home? Or, or, or should we hide it? I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm confused. Give the gun to Daddy Derek, who is clearly the owner since he's armed to the teeth and likes showing off his toys? It's a gun over there! 
I can bring it to school and take everyone's lunch money. It's going to be that time for me. <laughs> Well, on the plus side, he's still got a more believable laugh than Jared Leto's Joker. <laughs> they tell Daddy Derek about Butch taking the gun, then Daddy Derek calls Butch's father about it. It turns out that Butch's dad doesn't intervene in any way, so I'm not sure what the point of showing this is. Do we want to show kids that doing the right thing doesn't work? <laughs> Hey, Mama Cat, I just talked to Butch's daddy, and he's one investigator for us. After I find the rest of your body, then we can actually get you in frame. Another crappy night transition later, the kid's epic slow-mo walk to school, then Butch is arrested before it can be fat time for him. Look, the problem is over. It's not resolved in any way, it's just over. So, hooray, everyone is perfectly safe. We're proud of you, cool cat, and the teachers love you. Thanks! But I had a lot of help from my friends, and it's terrific to have friends! Ah, uh, there it is. It'd be too easy to cut it like the other times he's jerking it, but Daddy Derek left in this last jerking because I guess he wasn't paying attention anymore. And huzzah! Cool Cat won the writing contest, which can only be because absolutely no one else entered. Wow! Maria, look at this! And I realized... It's not about the money, it's about making great stories! Clearly! Hey, Cool Cat and Maria. I, I wanted to apologize for all the dumb stuff I did. Apologize instead for your bad sound mixing. How is it that you sound worse here than in the original cut? Hey, Cool Cat and Maria. I, I wanted to apologize for all the dumb stuff I did. Hey, Cool Cat and Maria. I, I wanted to apologize for all the dumb stuff I did. This is our crowdfunding dollars at work, people. We learned that it's important to stand up for yourself and not be afraid to yell and draw attention because remember, bullies don't like attention. Neither do decent editors, apparently. What about cyberbullying? How do you stop it? Well, you see, guys, I thought long and hard about this. And with cyberbullying, you kind of can't really stop it if you don't know who it's coming from. But my best advice, just ignore them! Really? Just ignore them. Wow, that is rich coming from you, Daddy Derek. Tell me, is that what you did when this movie came under attack from a bunch of bullies way back when? Oh wait, that's right. You flagged a whole bunch of reviews for infringing on your copyright, you lied about how they don't fall under fair use, and you threatened to have a whole bunch of people's YouTube channels removed. Including my own. So that was Cool Cat Kid Superhero, and I'm at a loss for words. Derek Savage raised $2,700 to take a piece of crap movie and turn it into something more cinematically correct. And this was the result? The new scenes were pointless. What was cut seems like it was done at random. It's still loaded with padding. The amount of mixed messages is staggering. And the recasting of Mama Cat only showcases what a bully Derek Savage is. What the hell was that $2,700 budget spent on? But it's not all bad. The icing on the cake is seeing my name in the credits as one of Cool Cat's Kickstarter friends. Oh yeah, one of Derek Savage's bullies helped get this piece of crap onto the potential big screen. I say potential because there is no way that a piece of garbage like this is ever going to make it into theaters. See you later. <laughs>
Guys, I've got a nice big package here to open from our old friend Kim Brent. Let's see what she's got for us today. Oh my goodness! Hi Kim. Yes, hi Kim. We've got more bubble wrap. Yes. And inside it, we have. Ooh. It is a coffee mug. That is covered in the White Rabbit from Disney's Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> that is awesome! It is. I have a companion mug for my Hatter mug. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. And along with it, we also have the Little Rascals on DVD. Good to have a spare. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm noticing there's a... Note here in the bottom of the package. Let's try to put those on top so we can read them first. Sorry. Let's see what we got. Maybe you should just look more carefully. Mm -hmm. Say cheese. Cheese. There you go, ladies. <laughs> oh my god. And then say wine. And then say happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's see, remove wrap before placing in the envelope. Uh-oh. The cheese was supposed to do something. Or... Nope, it's just... on there. A little 3D piece of cheese. <laughs> Thought I had, like, a sound chip or something. But, thank you very much, Kim. <laughs> You're cheesy, that's the perfect card for you. Of course. <laughs> Inside we also have a manga of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Again, the timing on this is just weird. This, this is the fourth or fifth Japanese type thing something that you've received like that, in yeah. this round of unboxings. I haven't given any indication that I was going to review any manga or anime or anything at all last year. This is supposed to be a birthday present. Sorry, I'm opening it so late. So we can just count this as an unbirthday present, I suppose. But, yeah, this is like the fourth or fifth something that I've opened in a row that was potential anime material for me to review. <laughs> this is weird. It's fate. It is. Oh, but on the plus side, uh, oh, well, I was going to say, at least it looks like it's being read from left to right for the stupid American readers like me out there, but um, actually it's not even a typical manga. It is just the book with manga illustrations in it. Like here we have the Tweedles relaying the tale of Old Father William. Let's see what else we got. I see what she's trying to do. She's yeah. trying to ease you into that whole yes, reviewing to manga. <laughs> wheedle me into it. It's nice and easy. Got the mock turtle and the griffin in there. And she's just, oh my, how curious. <laughs> Big eyes and knee socks. <laughs> and thankfully no tentacle monsters in Wonderland, as far as I know. Yet. 
You haven't read the whole book? Well, I thought I did, but now I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. I will enjoy this. <laughs> I want to see what the what the caterpillar looks like in those illustrations. Ooh, good question. Let's see. Caterpillar, caterpillar, where would he be? Uh, oh. The caterpillar looks like this. Oh, very cool. Oh, really? <laughs> I am judging you for no adequately explored reason. <laughs> I just thought if there was going to be a tentacle monster. Oh, God. <laughs> that would be the one. <laughs> oh, no, that would be the Jabberwocky. <laughs> He's got those uh, long uh, catfish whiskers. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure those could be reappropriated for other means. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta stop because that's gross. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kim. I will enjoy perusing through that. Anyone else who has any fan mail or uh, movies or packages they want to send me, go ahead and ship it to the PL box in the corner. And I'll see you guys later. Subscribe, like, follow.